Thank you for being here today. So over the past year, I met and interviewed more than 100 people as part of the Berlin hiring pipeline. And I can say that the way the interview is carried out is really, really important. Today, we're going to play out two scenarios to showcase what gives a good interviewing experience and what delivers a bad interviewing experience, in my opinion. In order to do so, Isabel will join me on the stage as the candidate. So let's start this interview. Hi. Hi. Aladdin, take a seat. Uh, okay. That's not the way to do it, right? Let's try it differently this time. Hi. Hi. I'm Aladdin. Isabel. Nice to meet you. How are you? Good. Cool. Uh, please settle down, and we're going to get started soon, okay? Okay. Cool. Thanks. Setting the atmosphere of the interview in the beginning is really important. Making sure that Isabel here feels welcome instead of being put to the test, is key to setting the trend of the interview to be a successful one. You have to set the tone for a conversation. Tell me about your experience. So, uh, I worked as a front-end developer for the past three years, and I have been mainly focusing on... So, you're not good with back-end? Uh... Um, I, I mean, I do back-end, but I've mostly been working on the, on the front-end side. How about databases? Um, uh, I, I know SQL. Okay. Notice how the line of questioning is driving Isabel into a rather uncomfortable position. She's not even reassured that not knowing something is fine. We have to try it differently. Let's try some open questions this time. I'd love to know about your experience. So, I worked as a front-end developer for the past three years, mm -hmm. uh, and I've been focusing a lot on abstracting problems into solutions. Oh. I haven't done so much on the back-end side, so I would love to get back into that. All right. And, like, do you have any particular areas of improvement that you would like to mm. keep up your skills on? I'm really keen on working with highly available systems, Good. and I would love to brush up my infrastructure skills. Great. It's good that you know that. Mm. So as I give space for Isabel to share her experience and to tell me about her strengths and weaknesses, she's more comfortable opening up about what she wants to learn and what she wants to improve on, for instance, and what she's good at as well, which gives me a better insight in her skill set. Um, we have an exercise now. Okay. You're going to have to do it. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Okay. Um, um, I, uh, I would start here, and then... Um, that's wrong. Uh, um, if I start here, and then move here, and then... Uh, yeah. Let's... let's move to the next task. Raise your hand if you agree with me that we can do way better than that. All right, cool. Um, so I have an exercise for you. Okay. Um, so the idea is that it's going to be a challenge that you're going to be driving, okay? So how about we get started now? Okay. All right, cool. Um. Um, I would start with this part here. Mm -hmm. All right. And then move. Excuse me. Did you think about this case? Um, I'm, I'm not sure that will work. Mm -hmm. oh. Or actually, if I started here, uh, I could cover that edge case All right. by moving here later. And I th oh. think we would be able to improve the performance. Nice. All right. So instead of harshly judging Isabel and being like, oh, you're not good at that, you're not good at this, I tried to just see if she was missing something. I mean, I tried to see her true talent by trying to tap into her potential, instead of adding an emotional barrier to her interviewing experience that will completely, like, disorganize her or, like, change her direction in the interview. All right, so to sum up, by giving a safer space, by being more empathetic, and by trying to tap into people's true potential, you can foster a better interviewing experience. 
And if you switch it to your workplace, all right, good, yeah.